Well, Miss Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Congratulations on uh, your decision to run for office uh, for NC House District 12. Tell us about your experience campaigning so far. Thank you for having me, first of all. Uh -huh. And my experience campaigning is that I'm feeling much, much better mm -hmm. this time. You know, I did have a, a run in 2022, my first time out. Uh, this time, we're learning to do some things that we didn't do that time. Mm -hmm. We've got some help this time that we didn't have last time. Right. So I'm feeling real good. We're getting in front of people mm -hmm. uh, and... We've got a lot of other organizations, you know, bringing people out to vote, mm -hmm. and that is the key. Well, I, and I know that feeling well because when, when I first ran for office years ago, it feels like it's been forever now, but uh, there was a big difference between the first time I ran and the second time I ran. You le I learned so much from the first campaign. Mm -hmm. You've got well over 30 years of experience, you know, in, in both education and community service. How, how do you think all those years of experience can help you if you were elected this November 5th and got to serve for the next two years in North Carolina House? I, I think one of the ways that would help me is that I'm used to working with people. Mm -hmm. I'm used to working with people at all levels. I'm used to being in the corporate boardroom. I'm mm -hmm. used to being in the kitchen with people. I'm used to being at the recreation centers. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that they pretty much have a personal experience with me mm -hmm. through their children and through the other organizations that I work with. Right, because I, I, right before we went on air, I, 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 so the last time I saw you, you were uh, you were you were at that day, and you still do serve as a chaplain at mm -hmm. the local hospital here. And you know, just talk about how that how good that must pe make people feel to be in the hospital, such a uh, unfortunate circumstance, and to see a smiling face come in and let them know that someone cares about them. Yeah, you know, how how do you take some of those experiences with you to Raleigh? They will be personal experiences for one. They'll mm -hmm. be personal experiences. They'll be real life experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and there'll be experiences that people have lived. And you know, when you leave and go home, those kinds of things are still on your mind. Mm -hmm. So you have a time to process what's gone on with people and what might make it better. Right. You, you have that um, personal processing time and then you're able to, you know, take a personal privilege to get help wherever you can for people. Right. And one other thing, they'll trust you. Mm -hmm. They trust you if they know you and you've worked with them and you're out there with them. And I know one thing that you've talked about, uh, both in your website and uh, on the campaign trail, has been addressing poverty uh, and people's individual economic circumstances. Uh, what, what do you think some policies are that uh, could help address some of those issues uh, to help this district, which covers uh, Lenore, Green, and Jones counties? Well, you know what we might be able to do that would make a big, big difference is this. We're training, uh, you know, giving everybody training through the college. Mm -hmm. We've got programs out there that help train our people that don't want to, you know, do the college experience mm -hmm. and end up in debt. Uh, I think what else we can do is this. We can make sure that... Uh, let me say, go back and say, I am the oldest of 13 children in my family. So mm -hmm. I kind of know mm -hmm. uh, when they say poverty, I know what poverty really is. Mm -hmm. And now livable wages, mm -hmm. when people are able to get to livable wages, that make a difference, that people can live with dignity. Right. Uh, the other thing I would say is, you know, training through our public schools and through our colleges and universities, those kinds of things. But tax exemption status on some things. Mm -hmm. And let me say too, now, you say in our community, one thing I've noticed in the larger communities, you know, the bigger cities and the bigger, great bigger corporations, they share the wealth with their employees. Mm -hmm. They fare really good. They've got benefits like, wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have to start learning and getting to that point that we offer 
better benefits and things like that to our employees. And, and you mentioned uh, education just a, just a moment ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about, you know, we've got a constitutional mandate to give everybody uh, a free public education. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a great thing our state does. Uh, tell us about public education and, and specifically on the funding side. Do you think there's enough funding? Uh, what should we do different? Uh, what are some of your values, some of your goals in that regard? What I do know is this, public schools work. I know that because I'm a product of public schools. My children are products of public schools. And look at all of the children that have gone through public schools. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are productive citizens. They are excelling in their uh, jobs and in their professions. Now, what I would say about uh, the funding, I don't know exactly what's in each pot for the funding. Mm -hmm. I do know this. Now, if COVID taught us nothing else, it did teach us that children learn better in person in schools. Mm -hmm. Let me say to you, too, uh, Mr. Murphy, that uh, I am as proud as I can be of Lenore, Green, and Jones County mm-hmm. having the opportunity to get, like, some new schools, you know, recently. And right. with the Frank yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, with that uh, promotion about the new school, and right. then Jones County got a new school back, yep. Green County. But let me tell you this. We have got to have our students in those schools, in those seats and learning. Right. And it will take us to, we've got the building and we got to fully fund. We've got to get our teachers excited mm-hmm. about education. And, you know, that comes with a lot of things, you know, not just money, but everything else that we can do. And, uh, well, and, and I want to kind of uh, go from education into economics. Uh, I mean, because uh, the local workforce uh, has an impact on, uh, you know, the educational uh, system has an impact on the local workforce uh, and the economy there. Uh, talk to a little bit about uh, the future. Things like the global transport had such a, is having, starting to have such enormous uh, success with Fly Exclusive and the FRC East uh, projects happening. Uh, how do you think projects like that or the Global Trans Park could help drive the economic engine of not just your your district, but possibly even Eastern North Carolina? Mm-hmm. Everybody is looking for a more economical way to get their products from one station to another. Mm-hmm. And if we can meet that need, we're drawing in other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think that just being able to do that one piece is going to make a big difference. And when we're able to do that, we'll have factories coming to build on our lands here and close. Mm -hmm. So all of that will impact. And if families come, they're going to bring their babies to our schools. Right. And and, and think uh, somewhere a little bit of both of those, you know, public transportation has been a, a topic of conversation uh, for some people, do you think we have uh, adequate public transportation to get help people get uh, to and from work, uh, to and from um, uh, schools, et cetera? Uh, do you think we need to make any improvements to our public uh, uh, transportation system here? We can always do more. We can always do more, add to what we've got, simply because everybody, you know, when you include the public, you still got some people that are needing extra help. You got some people that are not able to take advantage of what we have now mm-hmm. for one reason or another. Mm-hmm. So we always got to be looking for, look, like we say in school, leave no child behind. Right. What we want to do is leave no person that needs transportation behind. Mm-hmm. Want to make, make sure they can get. And, you know, because some of them, their lifeline, you know. Everybody don't have cars and things like that. So, you know, they have appointments. They have other things that they just need to do. Society, get out and live. Right. And you need public transportation. It, well, as, assuming you're victorious on uh, Tuesday, November 5th, as you wake up the morning of uh, Wednesday, November 6th, what are two or three things that Lily Will, uh, Williams, uh, NC House representative-elect, 
would like to see uh, starting to happen almost immediately? What would you like to accomplish in the next two years? One thing I would like to see is that, again, we start with the basic, the basic thing is getting our children educated. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see funding for our public schools in areas that have not been funded, that we can make sure that our kids are safe, mm-hmm. they're healthy, and in that environment, and everything that goes along with public schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, sometimes we just think the education piece, but without public schools, I'm wondering how civilized our whole society would be. Mm-hmm. That's my wondering. Right. Um, and something else I would think about too would be housing. Mm-hmm. When we ride around and we're looking at our bridges, and we see somebody asleep on the park bench or on the bridge, that is really not a good feeling. And I say to myself, I say, you know, well, we we've got houses that at least of four walls and a roof, right? You know that nobody's living in. I mean, that would be a start to get people off the bench and out from under the, but. Uh, I would try to look at affordable and accessible housing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we doing to make sure that people can afford? And then it still goes right back. Everything goes back to schools and getting your careers and getting a livable wage so that you can have affordable and accessible housing and health care. Right. You know we got to worry about health care. Right. That is going to be an issue that all of us from the cradle to the grave mm-hmm. is going to have to be worried about. Right. The older I've gotten, the more I've realized <laughs> I got to take more pills and it frustrates the heck out of me. <laughs> Fussed at my doctor recently about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not her fault. It's certainly 100% mine. Uh, right. uh, but listen, I, I, first, uh, thank you for coming. But, you know, as you think about November 5th and you think about people are early voting right now, uh, tell me, uh, you know, um, what is a final message you could give the voters as to why they should elect Lily Williams to the NC House District 12? The final message I would give uh, to any voter is to look at my record. I want, I want you to check my record. I want you to see that uh, now I was born in Lenoir County, then I grew up in Greene County, then now I'm back in Lenoir County. But uh, Lily Williams, when I was uh, JC, you know what our motto was, service to humanity mm-hmm. is the best work of life. And that's pretty much what I've done. I've let me tell you how I got, I worked at DuPont, mm-hmm. and when I worked at DuPont, I was working in the yarn. We had to check the yarn and package it. Right. And I thought to myself, is this all life is? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was making good money, but I wasn't fulfilled. Right. I, I didn't have that, um, the sense that I had value. So that's when I, you know, I went on back to school. I said, we know everybody needs an education. And I worked at Caswell Center uh, for a minute, and I just knew that I could do better in the public schools. Mm -hmm. So I came on out and worked in public schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'll say to anybody is check the record. And after, um, you know, working in education all those years, and working in my church, you know, serving serving the children, the pastor, the community, and um, then chaplain in the community. Right. Um, everything that I've done almost has been like for the people. Mm-hmm. And I apologized to my children one time. I said, you know what? I would have spent more time with you all. I just couldn't. <laughs> so when I was in the public schools, uh, they at least I, they could go with me, like to ball games and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no one hardly even knew that they were my children. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. 
but we didn't need special privilege. We needed everybody treated just alike. Right. Well, again, Ms. Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your willingness to run and uh, potentially serve in the North Carolina House of Representatives. Uh, so thank you so much. We really appreciate you. I'm running for the people. I really am. I just want to see people's quality of life be improved because mm. I know it can happen. Right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.